What? Netflix Nuggets? Oh my god, where have you been? I'm wearing red. And he's got Netflix time. I'm wearing red. It has been it's Netflix time. 28 days, 6 hours, 42 minutes, and 12 seconds since we last did. <laughs> I'm drinking coffee because I'm a man. Fuck it. I'm 40. I'm a man. No. <laughs> we watched a movie. Yeah. We watched a movie. We watched it. We watched a movie. Donnie Darko. It's a classic and so of American you, cinema. And this was requested to us by the Review Guy 95. Thank you, sir. And we're going to review it, guy. It's an excellent guy. choice. That's an excellent choice. Donnie Darko is one of my favorite movies of all time. Donnie Darko is an amazing freaking movie. It's actually. awesome. I could, the first time I watched this movie, I was in college. It was like my first week of college. And this fat guy I lived across the hall, he was like, look at this. I want to show you something. Have you ever seen a portal? He like opened this chest and it was like glowing and he had all these fucking movies. Back then it was a lot for DVDs. Yeah. And I was like, I want to borrow that. He was like... I don't loan out my movies. And he's like, but for you, I will. <laughs> so I a watched it. The gods. I was sitting on my bunk bed, okay, in, in my dorm room, my shitty little dorm room, and I watched it, and it ended, and I was like... That's exactly how I felt, dude. It was one of those <laughs> hidden gems I didn't even think... I, I don't even know why I watched it. I think I just watched it on a whim. It, I, I just happened to turn it on, and I watched it, and that is exactly what happened in my... Like, the mad world... Yeah. Like, I, I felt like I slipped into that. I was like, oh, oh. I think it's kind of funny. I think I it's, think kind, it's of kind of sad. It's like a fantasy drama gothic style movie. Uh, Donnie Darko is a troubled teen. He goes to high school. It's 1988. And he is on medication and he starts seeing this psychotic weird bunny. I don't know if it would be a psychotic weird bunny. He's just like this weird bunny called Frank that starts telling him that in 28 days, 44 minutes, 12 seconds, whatever, the world's going to end. And he has, and he's traveled back through time to help him fix stuff. And that's yeah. pretty much it's it. So really, it's just, if you've never seen it, it, that's actually the plot. Like It's just a conjunctive fuck of crazy stuff. Conjunctive fuck! Yeah. Uh, you know what? I will say that this Why don't you go suck a fuck? Oh, please tell me, Elizabeth, how exactly does one suck a fuck? <laughs> you want me to tell you? Please tell we me. We will not have this at the dinner table. <laughs> no, he said fuck ass. <laughs> Did you just call me a fuck ass? Elizabeth, that's a no. He <laughs> called her a fuck ass. Just said, why don't you go fucking suck a fuck? Bones! Is that Frank? You can go suck a fuck. Uh, the movie's kind of like one of those movies that are like, um... What's like, you can watch it several different times and always pick something new that you missed the first time. I mean, it's just so crazy and over the top. It really it makes you feel like you're in a spiral of shit, but you want to get out, but you're having a good time while you're in that shit. <laughs> Every single actor in this movie is notable for what they do. Yeah. Even the, to, down to the tiniest roles, they do a great job. Fuck! At, hang on. They do a great job of fuck. You might not know this, but Seth Rogen's in this movie. Yeah, the big fat bully. This is his first movie. He's the one that was like, he's like, yeah, I like your tits. The dad is awesome. Oh, that guy's cool as hell. He just looks yeah. like he just doesn't give a crap about nothing. It's so weird to see him, too, because he's from that movie, That Thing You Do, and he was such a prick in that movie. I, I want to see him in more movies. I don't know why he's not in more. He just looks like a guy that would be in Jimmy Dean's sausage commercial. Like, <laughs> the family reminds me of American Beauty. It's like the perfect suburban, like, kind of crazy. They got their own issues. Family. And Donnie Darko's the outcast of that family. Though. Yeah, like, it's perfect. And, and, and Jake Gyllenhaal, oh, my God. Like, amazing. this is what this solidified. I mean, this, this is what put him out there, I think. He was amazing in this movie. Like, absolutely was amazing. Too. But when you watch it, he was so good at it, I almost thought watching it, because this is back before he was big, I was like, I wonder if he'll be in other stuff. Like, I love this guy, but he, this might be like his only movie. Yeah. But no, he freaking blew up, and rightfully so, because it's awesome. I agree. Uh, the acting was amazing. I, I loved every bit of it. I loved how the, the, uh, the whole uh, development of the characters, too, because Donnie Darko starts out this dude that's kind of like, he's he's like an outcast of, of, of uh, high school and his own family, but he's still got friends, but they're kind of weird. Like, he's in that weird state. Like, but yeah. it, it just made sense, like, how his, like, his portrayal of high school and how he grows, and he finally gets his girlfriend and stuff like that and he starts coming a little bit more out of his shell but he gets weirder too because fucking Frank the Bunny comes <laughs> and I was like I was thinking that too when he was popping those pills like I will never ever fucking take those kind of pills like if I go to a psychiatrist she's like you're going to be on these pills like fuck you so he was like why don't you take the goddamn pills then how's it feeling bitch. I was, I was, yeah he's like well, apparently my son thinks well, I'm a bitch he's like you're not a bitch he's like you're bitching <laughs> and there were some funny parts and a little bit a couple funny stories we talked mentioned the dad but uh, the, the Jake Gyllenhaal and his buddies are standing at the bus stop and he's like this is good shit man he's like it's, it's, like, it's a fucking cigarette yeah. <laughs> and then when they're talking about the Smurfs being asexual yeah like that this movie's like it's it's written amazingly like I say Richard Kelly wrote and directed this movie this is his directorial debut and you really thought after watching this like this script is so fun like this movie is so cool you thought everything that comes out of this guy's butt is going to be amazing after no, this. And that. then what do you get? You get Southland Tales. Oh. And then you get The Box with Cameron Diaz. Yeah. It, it, he still hasn't lived up to it, really. But we still got Donnie Darko. Sometimes and, uh, you can only hit one home run. But yeah. that home run is glorious. Yeah. Like, the overall arc of the story, like, the whole thing, uh, the whole time travel vortex shit, all that stuff, the weird... 
goobly coming out of your chest. Cellador. Cellador. That's the most beautiful word in the English language. <laughs> uh, that stuff is so, it's written so well. Now, we were talking about this. It's like, you imagine writing this fucking script and having it all stay straight in your head. Yeah. You know, you just fucking blow a blood vessel. You blow oh, no. What the fuck happened? <laughs> it's just like, this movie's pretty funny. It's pretty weird. It's got this awesome 80s soundtrack overlay. Yeah. It's shot well. Patrick Swayze's in this shit as like the evil, uh, evil prince. Look, everybody, it's Tony Robbins. You know what I think? The whole school and the whole suburban thing was, I think that the director and the writer, they were kind of like showing it to be the fake, the all fake. Yeah. And, and Donnie Darko was the only one that was trying to be real and he was the outsider because he was so real. Yeah. And even Drew Barrymore mentioned that. It's like, all these kids are lost to... Uh, Apathy, because we can't reach them. And that's why he connected well with the two regular teachers. Yeah, because, because they, were, they were actually normal. Yeah, because they were, all the kids were apathetic. They just didn't care. Like they didn't really matter about what they were saying or what they were doing anymore. It's just that's what Donnie Darko was like. That was why he was the asset because he didn't fall in that whole like cheerleader. Yeah, because, because they were overly structured. Yeah, like, their whole lives were planned. It's kind of like fucking Stepford Wives. I really didn't get freaked out very much. Like when I was like watching it, except that part when he's in under hypnosis and the, the he's like, oh my god, there's Frank right now, and he sees him, and the Frank goes. Ah! Like that, it looks straight up in the sky. It's like the sky will open. It's like, ah! Oh. I was like, prickly flesh. <laughs> the first time you watch this movie, it's just an awesome experience, man. Because there's just so much crap happening. And you're like, how does that time this? Now we're going to time travel. Now there's a book, Roberta Sparrow. See, and there's also that, that, the whole thing about you can like take it and slice this movie up and say, well, it meant this, but it really meant this. Yeah. And someone else is like, no, no, no. That's fucking dumb. It meant this. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just so crazy how many different opinions people it's, have. It's the this. ultimate watch it with your friends and then afterwards just sit and talk about it for hours. This is a kind of movie that if you watch it with your friends, though, you can easily get into a fight with your friends. Oh, yeah. He's like, what the fuck? You know nothing. <laughs> and you're, you're going to be one of two people when this movie ends. And you're going to be, and that's probably why it never got big distribution. Like, it almost went straight to the Stars Network when it came out because nobody bought it. But it only made like 70 grand. And stars is home to the stars. <laughs> <laughs> it only made like 70 grand in the theaters because it was a minimum release. But what happened is, at the end of this movie, if you've never seen it before, you're going to watch it and you're either going to be like, oh, <laughs> my mind is fucking blown. Or you're going to be like, fuck this. This was yeah. stupid. I thought it was going somewhere and it didn't. I wouldn't be surprised if there are... Some people out there, they're just like, yeah, oh, that's yeah. a totally stupid movie. Like, the whole movie is dumb. But, I mean, I would say the majority, because it's got a huge cult following, are going to under... Like, they can understand what they're, what the whole thing is. It's not just, it's not just like, what's on the surface. It's like, what's below the surface. It's like an onion. you got to peel it. <laughs> this is, uh, and it has to do with the end of the world. And I love that shit. The end of the movie, I, I just wanted to know what happened. And, and watching and watching and watching, you kind of get an idea. You start to grasp... The ideas about what happened yeah, and, and it, it comes together a little bit for you. You make up your own assumptions. It's got time travel, it's got parallel universes, it's got fucking engines falling from the sky, it's got Jake Gyllenhaal, Maggie Gyllenhaal looks good in it. Yeah. It's got all sorts of goodness in it. Yeah. And all the acting is awesome. And I love to see Patrick Swayze in that kind of role. He was... He, I don't... I like Patrick Swayze, but I've never noticed him like until this movie that he could easily play a sleazy fucking fake asshole. I'm gonna go ahead and give my rating for it. Okay. 9.5. I'm gonna give this a 9.5. It almost got a 10, but the only reason why it didn't get a 10 for me is just because sometimes it gets a little bit... I don't like. I just don't like that whole operatic shit. The music to it sometimes it just got on my nerves. Like I don't know. Sometimes the music would be like, mm. yeah. I don't know. So that's why it's not perfect for you, but it's close. But it's yeah. It's for like me, right there. I'm gonna give it a ten, man. I, I'm gonna go with the ten. I'm gonna go with the gold Netflix nugget. It gets a ten, and it's the first time we've ever given a Netflix movie a ten. Yeah, it is. First, first time, time ever. And, and the reason why is because this movie is just, when I think of just movies in general, like, yeah, I'm sure it has, like, little plot holes possibly and, like, flaws, but the thing about it is when I think about movies and watching movies in general, this is one of the top ten movies that pops in my head. Yeah. It, you it know? Take, it takes you for a ride and pulls your nipples and you just don't yeah. know what's going on. It's just this perfect, surreal, weird, just, like, crazy universe that's like a cult slash sci-fi thing, and Jake Gyllenhaal, when you interject him into that, he's perfect. Yeah. I mean, he's the perfect... Donnie Darko. Nobody else in the history of ever could ever play Donnie Darko, and this is one of the only movies in the universe I'll ever say I will boycott it if they ever try to remake this. Movie. They'll never remake this movie. I don't think this movie. Like they try to like you know go by the success in the movie and make sequels, and they fucking were horrible. I hate. Did you ever see Darko? As oh, oh. Darko, I watched about five minutes of it, and I was like, no. Nope. There's a lot of movies that attempt to be this movie, but they're just being weird for the sake of being weird. This actually has underlying themes, and you can piece it together in your own way. And I like that they also weren't, they, they, they didn't make the audience, like, they didn't hold your hand through it. They didn't make yeah. you feel stupid, say, oh, we're going to explain every little thing that goes on. They like, left it up to conjecture. Like what happens, what's yeah. going on at the end, and what's what's happening, and it leaves you. Hopefully, you can catch on. But I mean, then again, any, everybody's gonna have their own opinion on yeah. their interpretation. But it did that. But in the same way, it did it in a way so that they weren't like we're up here and you're not smart enough for this. They yeah. did it like we're on your level and shit's fucked up down here, and we're gonna we're gonna twist your mind. It's like up. Sudoku. I mean, you gotta do that on your own. Do you Nobody do Sudoku? 
I do, do see you? you. I've never done it. You're such a fuck ass. I'm fucking. What's a fuck ass? If you've seen it, guys, let us know what you think happened. Give us your little idea of what, of what you think happened towards the end of that movie. I mean, it, it really is open to anybody. Yeah, and and where were you the first time you watched it? I mean, what what were you thinking? Like, what was that like for you? Because I mean, kind of, this I mean, is one of those experiences. Like where were you when the astronauts landed? <laughs> Until next time, I'm Mike, and he's Jay. Netflix Nuggets. We're back. We watched a movie.